Freemasonry. You mentioned that on the this uh, pyramid grave site, this uh, actually has a capstone even. There's the Knights Templar of Freemasonry, the symbol, and it, that's right on the front of your book here. You've got a picture inside the book of that, so that's totally indisputable. So we have the Freemasonry connection then, don't we? Yes. Uh, there, there are some people that actually have a copy of his Masonic membership, but the one that I know of in particular is hostile to Christians, I know three Christians who have managed to see uh, the membership certificate. The actual uh, storage place for his Masonic records are in Ireland because it was uh, it was a lodge in Ireland that sponsored, chartered the lodge in Pennsylvania that he belonged to. So the records always go back to the mother lodge. But the original Watchtower magazine had the Masonic Knights Templar logo on it. And it's because Charles James Russell, who founded the Watchtower Society, was a member of the Russell Illuminati family as well as a Freemason. His father-in-law was a Freemason. His wife was a socialist. And um, little known, a lot of people don't realize because it's kept hidden. His wife actually did a lot of the writing for him. And she, if you look at, at, at the roots of socialism and communism, you'll see it goes back to these occult secret societies. So it all ties in. Uh, does Freemasonry or some other secret group today, 1993 to 1994, control the Jehovah's Witnesses? My conclusion is yes. Uh, and uh, I give one of the men that I think they do it through. Uh, traditionally or, or publicly, the, uh, people have the idea that the governing body controls the Watchtower Society, but uh, insiders and people that are ex-insiders from Bethel headquarters give a different picture. Uh, there happened, well, recently the president of the Watchtower Society, Frederick Franz, died, and uh, for, he was about, I think, 99 years old when he died, and <clears throat> For many years, he had not been able to see or get around, and there happened to be uh, an Iraqi Jew uh, named Salih who was his mouthpiece, hmm. and every time somebody wanted to know what Frederick Franz's uh, orders were, they asked this guy, and this guy would go into Frederick Franz's room and then come out with the answer. Uh, <laughs> mm. We have a blind man in his 90s supposedly running this organization. Um, Sounds like Howard Hughes, you know, uh, in his last days, <laughs> the recluse and had other people to uh, operating his uh, huge empire. Uh, right, and boy. in the financial department of the Watchtower Society is more or less a law unto itself. There's a lot of hidden uh, politics going on and uh, connections to some of the very powerful elite in the world. Uh, there's connections between the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and the Morgans to the uh, Watchtower Society. And uh, all of these type of connections um, make me uh, conclude that, uh, that yes, uh, the Watchtower Society is being controlled very quietly from the outside. Uh, um, now, part of why we the connections between Freemasonry and the Watchtower Society are a little bit obscured is because some of the teachings that they had back in Charles T. Russell's time 
have changed. And in the Watchtower and Mason's book, I go through and I show at least 35 parallel beliefs. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Charles Ferguson, who wrote a book on the Freemasons, he said that what Freemasonry did, and, and it, this is just such an awesome statement that I might repeat it here. It, he said, Freemasonry had the supreme dexterity to replace a mysterious divinity with a divine mystery. And that's exactly what Charles Taze Russell did. He was always talking about the divine plan, the divine mystery. And um, 